Hey everybody, today we're solving polynomial and rational inequalities. We're going to work through three typical examples. In each case, the big idea is the same. Polynomials and rational functions can only change sign from positive to negative or negative to positive at two sorts of points. They're zeros and they're discontinuities. We'll call those cut points. Our idea is going to be to find the cut points and then manually check a value in each interval to see where the function's positive and negative, where the inequality is true and where it's false. Let's see what I mean by working through this first problem. 2x cubed plus 3x squared is greater than 0. So this is a polynomial. There's no denominator. The cut points are just going to be the zeros. So I need to solve this equation. I solve, polynomials, I solve polynomial equations by factoring. Here, I've got a common factor of x squared to pull out. Now, this product can only be 0 if one of the factors is 0. So I need to solve these two equations. When I do that, I get cut points of 0 and negative 3 halves. Again, the function on the left-hand side of that inequality can only change sign at these values. So, from negative infinity to negative 3 halves, it's either positive throughout the entire interval or negative throughout the entire interval. Similarly, for the intervals negative 3 halves comma 0 and 0 comma infinity. So I'm going to pick a point from each one of those intervals, plug it into the function, and see if I get a positive or a negative. And that will tell me whether the function's positive or negative on the entire interval. I'm going to keep track of my results using a sign chart. And a sign chart is just a number line with the cut points labeled. So let's pick a convenient value from that first leftmost interval, less than negative 3 halves. Let's take x equals negative 2 and plug it into the function, and we get a negative out. Now, I could plug in to 2x cubed plus 3x squared, but it's easier if I use the factored version. The reason is I don't really care about the value of the function at x equals negative 2. I just care about the sign, whether it's positive or negative. Plugging negative 2 into the factored version, I can just reason that I'm getting a positive times a negative. x squared is positive, and 2x plus 3 is negative when x is negative 2. And a positive times a negative is a negative. Similarly, when x is negative 1, I'm getting a positive times a positive. That's positive. And when x is positive 1, again, positive times a positive. So if the function is positive at one point in an interval, it's got to be positive on the entire interval between those cut points. So we know that this inequality has to be true between negative 3 halves and 0 and between 0 and infinity. But we don't yet know if it's true or false at the endpoints. We have to test those manually. So let's go back, plug in x equals negative 3 halves, and x equals 0 into that inequality and see if it's true or false. In each case, when I plug in, the left-hand side is going to be 0. So I'm getting 0 greater than 0. And that's not true. 0 is not greater than 0. So I have to leave out both endpoints from my solution set. Overall, I'm getting negative 3 halves comma 0 union 0 comma infinity with parentheses at the end of each interval indicating that the endpoints are being omitted. Problem 2. x minus 4 over x squared plus 2x minus 3 greater than or equal to 0. This time I've got a rational function, so I need to check for the zeros of the function and the discontinuities. Basically, setting the numerator and denominator both equal to 0. To do that, I want to factor as much as possible. The denominator becomes x plus 3 times x minus 1. Setting the numerator and denominator each equal to 0, I get these three cut points. Negative 3 and 1 from the denominator, and 4 from the numerator. I need a sign chart with those three values labeled, like so. Now I'm going to take a point from each interval, plug it into the function, and see if I get a positive or negative. Now, there's many, many um, values that I could choose. I'm going to choose negative 4, 0, 2, and 5. 
I just need one value from each one of those four intervals. Let's plug each one of these into the factored version and see if we get a positive or a negative. When x is negative 4, I've got a negative over a negative times a negative. So three negatives. Overall, that's going to be negative. When x is negative 2, it's a negative over a positive times a negative. Two negatives, so that's going to be positive. When x is 2, I've got a negative over a positive times a positive. And when x is 5, everything's positive. So overall, the function is going to be positive. Now I'm interested in where this function is greater than or equal to 0. So I know that this inequality is going to be true from negative, in, from negative 3 to 1 and from 4 to infinity. I still need to check the endpoints. I need to plug negative 3, 1, and 4 back into this inequality and see if I get a true statement or not. When I plug in negative 3, I get a 0 in the denominator, so the inequality can't be true there. Same thing when x is 1. Dividing by 0 means I'm going to have an um, inequality that's false. But when I plug in x equals 4, I get a true statement. 0 is greater than or equal to 0. Overall, 4 needs to be included. 1 and negative 3 should be left out. So here's the final, final answer to this problem. Open interval negative 3 comma 1, union 4 comma infinity, where 4 gets a closed bracket, and infinity, as always, gets an open parenthesis. Problem 3. x over x minus 1 greater than or equal to 2. This problem's a little bit tricky because the right-hand side is not 0. So before I can get cut points, I have to move everything to one side and get a common denominator. So let's subtract 2 from both sides. The common denominator is going to be x minus 1, so I'm going to multiply 2 by x minus 1 over x minus 1. Now I can write it all over that common denominator. I've also distributed through the 2 to get 2x minus 2. Distributing the negative sign and combining like terms, I get this. 2 minus x over x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. And now the cut points are obvious. x equals 1 and x equals 2. Here's the sign chart, the number line with those two values labeled. I need to check points in each one of those three intervals. We'll do 0, 1 and a half, and 3. When x is 0, I'm getting a positive over a negative, so the function's negative there. When x is 1 and a half, I have a positive over a positive, and when x is 3, it's a negative over a positive. So overall, the function goes negative, positive, negative. Now I'm interested in where it's greater than or equal to 0, and so um, that means that I know that inequality is going to be true from 1 to 2. Checking endpoints, I see that the inequality is false at x equals 1. I've got a 0 in the denominator, but true when x equals 2. When x is 2, I get 0 greater than or equal to 0. So overall, the answer to my inequality is going to be the interval from 1 to 2 with 1 omitted but 2 included.